especially that, that floor to which was exposed to visitors, it's as a shape. Okay. Do you have any other thing to say about that floor before we move to the second floor? I think I've described it in one word, that that particular floor was a shape. Okay, so let's go to the second floor. First of all, there are their offices in the second floor. Yes, they were. Of course, slowly, if you can recall what offices were there. Before you go to that floor, you have, you have to climb the, the, the staircase because there was no elevator in the building. The staircase was wooden. And it will not only creak, but it will kind of move up. Do you need some water, Mr. Nalu? I, I have a lot of water. Mm -hmm. It will kind of uh, smear. And we had a lot of patches on it, a lot of patches with uh, some metal uh, 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 stuff being tied or attached to it. And uh, it made it also difficult for the ambassador because the ambassador, that staircase was very first to for the ambassador at the time. And the ambassador was in a real difficulty in terms of not only sitting up there, but also receiving his colleagues or visitors who come to see him there. That floor was messy. The staircase, the floor itself. Which floor are we on now? I'm talking about the second floor. Second floor. There are wall on the wall. But my question was, if you recall the offices that were there. So the office of ambassador. We talked about the office of the ambassador. Yeah. And then the section. Those are the only two offices there? Yeah. It was a big office. Very big. It occupied the entire floor. Did it have... Well, what, what do you have to say about the electricals and plumbing? They say, in fact, uh, the ambassadors, they were really constrained in terms of this and that office. New York is the center of the world, the center of global governance. That is the United Nations. And you have your colleagues from other countries, one of them is a three. Every day, you, day, you must have a visit. Because you can see some either a permanent representative or maybe a minister from the country to inform the visit. So each time they come, even from our own capital, people who are coming from the and it is, uh, so the ambassador was constrained. So often, they also would do a handout at the moment. Okay. Okay, Mr. Nalo, again, still watch your speed. Uh, So at the time you were there in 2015, was that particular floor used by the ambassador as an office? Yes. But the ambassador said only that that office. Like I said, we prefer to go straight to the UN and we only come there later in the evening for meals, to collect meals. And we sit there for a little while and then that's it. Because the duty was really bad, that floor was bad. Okay. Okay. Was there another floor on top of that second floor? Yes. We had, we had another floor up there. That's like the third floor now. I'll call it the fourth floor. I don't know. We thought I don't have any tune with you. Of the floor. Uh, that's why I've clarified it. We have a basement and four floors. Yes, a lot. So we've done the ground floor, which is the first floor, the second floor, the third, this should be the fourth. The fourth floor. Yes, so we've no, done the basement. Yes. We've done the first floor. We've done the second floor. Now you go to the third floor. Okay, that's the third floor. My lord, I think he asked me first about the basement, which I explained. They are also, yes, they also asked me about this, about the first floor, which is the ground floor, which I also explained. They asked me about the first floor, where I said we had the toilets and the reception. 
Yes, that's the second floor. Then after all, the third floor, which is the ambassador's quarters of his offices, and then the fourth floor, which yes. is... That, that's where we are going now, the fourth floor. Yeah, that floor used to house uh, the two deputy ambassadors. There was another room there which was occupied by some colleagues. My lord, put your mic on. With your leave, uh, I've been noting that uh, the was the basement, first floor, second floor. And I believe we are now supposed to be on the third floor, but he's making the reference to the fourth floor. Yeah, because the makers count floors differently. That is why okay. I started off with the basement. As the, the first floor. It, no, no, the basement is the basement. Uh -huh. We consider the ground floor, but they consider that ground floor as the first floor. Uh -huh. That's the difference. Uh -huh. But I'm fully in tune with him. Obliged. Okay. So we have um, three offices of the one was occupied by the two deputy ambassadors. Mm -hmm. Another was occupied by uh, two colleagues. And then we had, but that one that was occupied by three colleagues was really tiny. Even they were occupied by the two deputies. It was also not really quite defeating that of the status of an ambassador. And then there was, a, there was another room which I was using. Yes. It was a very small room, just one person, just in the other seat. Okay, so, uh, so I take it that there were no other floors after that floor, from what you can tell. There are no other floors after that floor. But that floor too, you know, I have um, been somebody who is allergic to all of this kind of death that was, or thieves that was in that building. I, uh, that, that office which was allocated to me was also, for the most part, not occupied by me because I had to stay out of the building, for the most part. Um, I, like I said, I only told me like the able to breathe with like the ambassador normally do. Now, during that period, I mean, there are there meetings held for the entire membership of the staff? <coughs> meetings were held, yes. So where were those meetings held? In the office of the ambassador. It was the only space that we could utilize for that. But those meetings were also done mindful of the fact that the condition of the building did not really permit us to stay there for too long, especially for the ambassador's health. He was a old man. So we never had long, very long meetings. So coming back again, because uh, we are still dealing with uh, your recall, did you? Why is there as a director at any point in time have any idea as to any efforts being made to refurbish that building during that time? I was there not as director, I was a councillor, which is uh, equivalent to that of deputy secretary in the civil service. Um, amongst my many uh, assignments, each and every one of us also had administrative assignments. I was also given the assignment to assist the head of Chancellor. as secretary of the committee that was set up to look into the possibility of renovating the building. Okay, so there was a committee for that? There was a committee. All right. 
So that since you said you are the secretary to that committee, can you tell us the composition of the committee that we call? The committee was chaired by the head of chancellor. And then the accountant, the military attache, So the accountant was a member of that committee. The accountant was a member of that committee. And was chaired by the head of chancellor. Chaired by the head of chancellor. Yeah. Then there was also the military attache, who was also part of that committee. Yes, yes, yes. And I think we have like four other officers. My memory is asking why it's such a long time now. But I was part of, of, of that committee. Do you know who set up the committee? It was set up by the head of chancellor. Mm -hmm. and as secretary to that committee, did you recall the specific terms of reference of that committee? Well, it was more like an exploration because, to be honest, uh, like those before us who tried to fix that building, the mission was constrained in terms of funding. There was no money to do any work. And so we are holding meetings, coming up with ideas. Sometimes we we we'll seek advice from the neighbors, the very neighbors that took us to court on this day and because they are both me and they have also done their own rehabilitation of the same building. And then we went out to look at other missions and to see those who had done renovations and how they went about doing it. And we we'll try to compare and to know some of the people that were involved in those renovations in terms of the technical team, contractors, and all of that. We tried to get from them to assist us so that we could also reach out to those people, to the same people. And we also had a series of other meetings pertaining to how do we really get a free time as capital here to provide funding for the building because we had a very bad history in New York a very bad one at that, when we lost the residence of the ambassador in Mount Vernon. That building too was abandoned. It had dilapidated. At the time, uh, it was a building that forced the city authorities to sell it, to kind of auction it, because they could not repair it. And that is the residence of the ambassador? Of the ambassador in Mount Vernon. It was quite an expanse, quite a, 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 a huge building. Uh, okay, so let's come back to the chancellor. Okay. Uh, so we had a very bad issue then. So yes. because of that, we wanted to be sure that that did not happen to this particular building. So as a committee, did you at any point in time come up with any uh, key points or resolutions that are presented to capital in respect of yes, we did need for information. Yes, we did. But before doing so, we also consulted the civil unions in New York in particular, who we are also in the business. I remember there was one Mr. Kuruma, I cannot recall his first name. We engaged in we engaged him, and he gave his services to us, he helped us to also start around and to look for options. And there were also ideas about getting uh, people who are property developers to develop the property, and then we occupy a portion of it, and then they went the rest. It didn't work out because we tried several of them. Each time they come, they look at the building, they will tell us their building is not suitable for that because 
at the time were not allowed to do any extension as they wanted to do. I think they wanted to add like four or five laws in the current, and then they can leave the rest to us. But then, you, you, you know, I mean, they want to lose profit at the shortest possible time. Okay. Um, did you, during those meetings, keep minutes of, of meetings? Yes, we used to. We used to have meetings, uh, minutes of those meetings. But to be honest, uh, I, I just can't remember or um, recall, except maybe perhaps if I were to check my email. Okay. Now, in view of the fact that you've described this building at that time as being in this terrible state. Do you know or not if there were any visits to that building during your time by the New York uh, building department in terms of uh, inspecting the state? Yeah, the conditions. I think it was a complaint. The neighbors complained, and one day when I came back from the UN, I was told that uh, our building has been declared on fit, and that the insurance company, I think it was so so Tell us what you know, not what you were told when you were not present. Yeah, so, but then, yeah. for the insurance company, I was around when they came in. Okay. They refused to renew the insurance for the building. And the reason why we actually left now that building was because even our head insurance insurer, they came one day and said to us that any illness emanating from related uh, 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 issues pertaining to that building, their insurance must come. You were present when they came? Yes, I was there. So tell the court what exactly they said when they came. Mrs. Matthew was there. Uh, I think I have I just gone down there to meet Mrs. Maturi for something. I said, I just wanted to them. And I stood there listening. It was not like a meeting that she invited me to know. So what did they say? They are talking about the condition of the building. That they have come to understand uh, that they that we do not have the property insurance, that's one. Who said they have come to understand? The uh, health insurance company. So, and when you say we do not have the property insurance, we do we? The mission. Insurance. There was no insurance on that building. Even now, the other two buildings, they have declined to renew the insurance on them. <laughs> okay, so apart from the health insurance, did any other New York State Department uh, official? They did. Uh, like I said, uh, after the insurance companies, the next thing we got was uh, an inspection of the building. By whom? By the Department of New York. Do you recall when that was? No, I can't recall the exactly. I was not in charge. I was just happened to be part of the mission, and so some of these things will not go unnoticed. Sometimes they will talk at meetings, we get to know. But were you present when they came to do the inspection? No, I wasn't there. Okay. All right, let's fast forward a bit. You were recalled to capital. But before we fast forward, let me just throw a little bit of light on some of these uh, challenges and how I actually got perhaps uh, myself involved in all Were there challenges? Yeah, I mean, there are challenges, for sure. In respect of what? Of the building. Uh -huh. So we had to move out. We moved to the Uganda house. Well, you moved out of the building? Yes, we had to. We are forced to move in 2015. Do you remember the month? I can't remember exactly the month, but we are forced to leave that building. I think it was around May, something like that. Around May. Around May 2015. Mm -hmm. Where did you move? I was about to leave the York at the time. My report had, was already in the process. And they moved to the Uganda house. Yes. 
Move slowly, Mr. Naro. Even my colleagues are right. So you said you moved from that building to Uganda House. We moved to Uganda House, and then we became into Uganda House. We first moved to the eighth floor, which was quite small to host us, even though at the time the mission was small in terms of number of staff, yet it was too small for us. And we are having all oh, the, oh, sorry. Yeah. We are also having complaints. No, no, when you moved into this Uganda building, and since you said you are counselor, which is at the very senior level in the mission. Do you know if uh, the mission had any arrangement with the uh, Uganda mission in terms of occupying that eighth floor? We have a pay So we stand this agreement with Uganda House. <coughs> For you recall how much that rent was? It yeah. is something like uh, just Something around, I believe, around fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars per month. A month. A month for a very small space. Do you recall how many rooms or offices were in that small space? The floor. There are only two offices and an opening, which the rest of mankind would have to sit because the the ambassador occupied one of those rooms. In fact, he did not fully occupy it because it, it, what he did was he got us to, to put a small, mini, a small conference table there, which uh, he would use to hold meetings with us. But there was no other space for that. And then the head of chancery was placed in one small, tiny place. And then we remarketed the place for the two deputies. Yes. But then, yeah, Mr. Nalo, mm -hmm. I mean, um, I just want to pinpoint certain things so that I don't lose track. Now, in just a short summary, can you specifically tell the court why the bishop moved from where it was to the Uganda House? I'll explain that, but well, let me go back. Hold on, Mr. He explained all of that. The building was so bad that the insurers could not even be tasked with, with reinsuring the building. So it wasn't safe from a safety point of view, and they had no insurance covered. So they could not continue to stay there. Thank, thank you, my lord. And even the inspectorate of New York. Uh, yes, because the neighbors were always complaining about our building, the state of our building. Okay. I think the rats, the roaches from our building, they are also invading their own property. Even though they will do everything to clean up. Okay, Mr. Nalo, I think we'll cut that to me. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Nalo, all of these issues were happening in 2015. Before 2015. Yes, but the, no, high, but 2015, no, the high point to be. Yeah, the high point to be. Your, your recollections are primarily based on what you saw in 2015. Yes. And let me That's tell you, let me also tell you, my lord. That when we moved to Uganda House, we will not take all the pressure that we have on that building. That's from the building department of New York. They reported the mission to the State Department, and the head of Chancery was invited to a meeting to the Office of Foreign Missions in New York. And we also received violations, letter of violation from the building department. They find us. That is the mission, they find the mission. And then they took the mission to do the, 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 the sidewalk, which had also cracked, and that if anybody stumbles and fell there, we would have to pay the cost. And remember, we didn't have any property insurance. Okay. 
So one day at the UN, my colleagues, okay. one day at the UN, my colleagues approached me. They wanted to discuss with me, but then they said, we'll come to my office. When you say colleagues, your workmates or? No, no, colleagues are not a mission. Normally, we meet, we interact, sometimes over coffee, sometimes over lunch, or dinner. That's your colleagues from other missions yeah, approach. they Yeah, they approached me, they wanted to meet in my office. First, as chair of the G7 Plus, experts, group of experts, they wanted to meet me. And I told them that I would rather host them at the Timorist mission. At what mission? Timorist. East Timor. Or oh, East Timor. But then he, he tried another one. The other colleagues from the CTE, the committee that the president chairs for security and reform, they came. They wanted to see me in my office. I was right there with Mrs. Maturi, but I told them I was not there, that I would have to meet them somewhere. Then the other day, the other police from the Chinese mission wanted to see me. And I said to them, no, you cannot come to my mission. You have to meet elsewhere. So they insisted, they came. And that's how the Chinese brought the police. All right, hold on. Mr. Fofan. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. If we accept at the barest minimum, that this building was so bad that it was uninhabitable. Would that assist you? Yes, I mean, that is why when your lordship summarized it, I just chose to leave. And I don't believe Mr. Mansibo would not concede to that fact. Well, insofar as 2015 was concerned. Definitely not, really, no problem. Your, your mic is not working. His position is they definitely have no problems with that. Yes, no problem. So, Mr. Nalu, let, let us just move on. I mean, now I know that you are at the verge of coming to free time. Mm -hmm. I know that you moved from um, the Chanship building to Uganda House, eighth floor. Eventually, did you come to free time that year, 2015? Yes, I did. Do you recall what month that was? I remember I received a call. So at the time I was still uh, trying to put Alan George. Remember the month? Into the driving seat. So I, I remember very well that in September when the delegation for the Ongar was in New York, I was uh, told that uh, the ministry had posted out uh, some senior colleagues, and that there was going to be a problem at HQ in terms of. This is now the end of the month. Yes, I'm, 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 I'm trying to just by by narrating this, I'm really trying to get my. my oh, hand you did say um, Mr. George arrived in New York in August. In August, yes. Right, so roughly yeah, long after that. Mm -hmm. So I think I left New York November or December, then about November or December. I think November. And then you came to free time. I came to free time. <coughs> we will definitely be here in December for Christmas. <laughs> Not really. Um, remember, you went back. I was leaving my family behind at the time because it was an urgent call to come to free time urgently because there were meetings that they wanted me to come and assist the ministry to prepare for. Um, and so when I said that I needed to get my stuff packed and shipped, they said, no, no, you come and start work. At some point, you go back and pack. OK, so you came sometime around November. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. So when you came, you continue to work for the foreign, foreign uh, ministry? Yes. In what capacity? Um, I was assigned as the director. At that time, it was called International Organizations and Legal Affairs. But later, it has changed to multilateral division. 
Poate la fel, a fost 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 la fel, a I support the office of the Director General to the Deputy Director General and of course uh, the Office of the Minister. That was my role. Basically, um, so all correspondents coming from multilateral organizations like the United Nations, we are verified by my division. Whenever they call me, either the DG or the DG will minister them to me, take action on them. So during that time, did you, by chance, receive any correspondence in respect of the need to rehabilitate or refurbish the chance building? Did you come across any such correspondence? When I arrived, I think. I was on one day intimated by the then deputy director general that they were having problems with uh, getting uh, the, the funds from the Ministry of Finance to transfer to the nation in New York for that, re that rehabilitation because they have received a lot of correspondence from the mission. explaining the urgency. As the mission was now faced with a similar challenge that they were faced with when the property in Montana was sold or was auctioned. So did you come across any specific correspondence that you can recall? Yes, I did. Um, at the time, I was really like on the periphery of things until one day they invited me to one of the meetings. The DDG at the time invited me to one of the meetings to participate in that meeting. DDG meaning? Deputy Director General. Okay. But you know. And what, what was the meeting about? It was about it. Israeli properties are not only that mission. We are having problems with other properties as well. The properties in Addis Ababa, the contractors. Regarding, the regarding, report, okay. regarding the property at New York, the Chanshi building, was there anything discussed about that property in that meeting? All the, all the missions that had property issues were discussed. Yes, I'm narrowly narrow down low. Addis Ababa and Ghana, they were all discussed. Yes. So. Even the Gambia was discussed. Okay, so let's come back to the charge. <coughs> Do you recall what was discussed about the charge building in that meeting? First, it was about funding. All of them, it was about funding. Number two, The, my sense of the meeting was that, firstly, there was no particular uh, there was no particular person that would really uh, sort of uh, Why do you take some water, Mr. No, no, no. It was like, uh, really we are having the constraint of having someone who would really take the fight seriously and move it to the next level in terms of getting things done. Someone who can move things, somebody who can get results, some result oriented individual who can move things. Right, and where was this result oriented person to be found? Well, maybe that's why they invited me. 
No, the Ministry of Finance or Foreign Affairs? Well, it was a question of the Ministry of Finance to raise funds. First, to add this about that. To continue with that construction work, for which we had, for which work had been for a long time. And the contractor had threatened to take. So let's come back to New York. On the point that I'm asking you, what I want to understand. If they said they wanted a result-oriented person, where was that person to be found? Well, they are looking within the ministry because... Which ministry? Within our ministry and also someone who can actually go around with the other MDAs that we are involved in this, in terms of working with them, creating a platform that can all work together. Now, would I also be correct that this meeting took place after you returned to Peter. When I returned, honestly, I, I was not initially involved in this until... No, 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 I'll just be clear. The meeting that you were called to where the DDG was present, mm -hmm. that meeting would have taken place after you returned to Peter. Yes. And it took place in Peter here. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. So, I, I mean, We'll be moving away from that meeting soon, but I just want to know what was specifically captured in that meeting about the Chanshi building in New York. That was a building. We know that there were other problems in Ghana, in Ethiopia. I want us to focus on the Chanshi The procurement unit of the ministry had advised the DDG. For you said the procurement ministry, unit of what ministry? Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I advise the DDG to do what? Yeah, now I'm trying to report some of the issues. Yeah, actually, they had actually advised the DDG that in spite of every effort by the head of Chancery to have the ministry to advertise the works for the construction of that building, they were constrained to do so because they needed the funds to be readily available before they were able to do so. And they did a commitment from the Ministry of Finance for that. Okay. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to understand here. The procurement units at Foreign Affairs that advised the DGD of what? Sir? Of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs? Yeah, advised them to what? That, as the first step, the funds. needed to be clearly identified and ring fenced before they could make any further steps. But then further steps, you said it in terms of advertising. Advertising. But I was not really involved in any of the procurement meetings. This was a general meeting. Because I was not part of the document unit. So when you came back in 2015, did you continue to be in the capital forever? No, no, I was there until December 2017. But let me just finish with that one about that meeting. Yes. My advice at that time was that. Instead of writing memos and hiding behind memos, that both steps should be taken to have meetings with officials at the Ministry of Finance to make sure that those forms provided by the partners we are replaced for the next project and that those forms should be meted to New York. They not be east, the body or, or the body. So if you are now happy on, <coughs> on an interesting area, you see the funds provided by the partners. Mm -hmm. To the best of your knowledge, were their funds provided in 2015 by any partner? Those funds were provided earlier than that. And what form are you referring to? The $2 million that was provided by the partners. There, were, there was $2 million provided by which partner? You know? 
So again, I mean, this is also part of the constraint. There are a lot of things, except maybe I mean, for the sake of defense, but sometimes we are really constrained because being under the official secret code, we are sometimes uh, constrained not to release certain government information, especially about when it comes to partners. All right. Hold on a minute. Um, gentlemen, Defense Council, Mr. Mason, Massimo, I think we need to take a break at this point. Hmm. It's the same way the place with the leak pass or turn and either they use bucket or umbrella. So it just be a try for telling about the deplorable condition of the structure at that particular time the way be the weekly as cancellor na the chance chance the mission. And of course um we didn't have we didn't have this uh our second time now because I get a I can say cast good um uh, afternoon and welcome to AYB television. Yes um Famulem good afternoon from courts number one main law courts building na Sheka Steven Street Free Town. And of course El Cast has some other believe for say Una Segunu Naina, the Director of Communications and the Sierra Leone Judiciary. And the Diafo can tell you exactly which in order happened from last week to now. Um, Samulem, um, we're happy that AYV, SLBC, FTN, and other media platforms them there for bring to UNI an independent, impartial reporting what in the happen now the court. Fambulem Unago member said we get um, a case we um, tied to the state versus Said Unalo and five others. This case will be known the long adjournment because of the political climate. That is to say, politicians then the need for go campaign institution in we own um, wisdom. We say because the climate the tension may not mount, we want to make court sittings, hearings to take place in an ideal, conducive, peaceful atmosphere. We will therefore adjourn this matter. Now, when I will agree with me, say the matter been resumed last week where AYB bring come to you know, what thing happened exactly at the same court here. Now, um, We've been not done with the locus inco, where the courts be moved from Salonia or from Musa with there, we go to New York. Why? Because the courts need evidence. Because conflict. Um, member said this is an allegation. Then all the way there before the court, nobody no guilty. Now just accuse them, accuse them, say then do A B C D. Now the anti-corruption way they prosecute and they call this matter to we, not to we call this matter. So we, as a, everybody, go see our own uh, respective places there. You no need for even come to court. If you get an Android phone, just follow AYV na the Facebook page, follow the link where they share, so that you will know exactly what's in the happen in the court. Make somebody no go lie to you. Make the person not tell you, say, hey, um, this Samuel Kamara no come, or this was here, they don't already say guilty, or this was here. No listen to them, say. I said, the current chief justice is not chief justice, there's Mombaba Tunde Edwards. Um, if they, they don't try together with the team, for me, the judiciary go to reforms, and this is a part of the reforms there, for able to enhance um, the credibility of the process, we able to maintain integrity of the entire judicial process. So now that's me, we're there, and I'm happy that we're not there, and we follow what they happen. Yes, I'm um, El Kass. I just want to exactly know if now every sitting or every hearing. In regard to this particular case here, yeah, we want to make sure, say, well, we will see you don't start up until conclusion, the day when they deliver judgment. Now, this same court here, yeah, AYB, SLBC, FTN, um, Star Television, all the respective media platforms, they will get now this country here. Yeah, then will come again. The day when they deliver, whether then they find guilty, they find them guilty, whether then they free, they free. If they all they find them, they find them guilty, now so the case, now so now 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 
that that the evidence will go point at them, will show say they're guilty. If they're not finding guilty, maybe the evidence will. But what I want me to tell you, more than no family, more than they listen to this program, the court, the court of law and court of fact, we know they rely on what people and they say. Now that even go make be make family when I go agree with me say we'll be moved for go to New York. Even when people I mean they talk all kind of thing, but we not self watch you. If we not be in the make sure say this whole process here, we we'll make a very transparent and accountable. Bring the whole process to Umi. And when we go to New York, we have to make sure say AYB is one life, SLBC is one life, and other media out there, they're sure alive. Like today, people and for don't talk all kind of thing. So we are not really rely on what people and they say. We will continue for bring AY, for bring and come to Una. as long as AYV, like where they know the commitment where um the chairman and CEO make um, uh, um Ambassador Anthony Navo for support we by providing the enabling platform to AYV, to SLBC, um then Director General Joseph Capua and FTN. Um, Star TV, all them, the management team or their heads, them also don't make commitment. This now a national service will do because we it's about people and reputation. So we want we know a male twelve around them team. So we know they we know they play around that. Equally, so we want to make family and we not know, say nobody know they were guilty right now. They all now accuse people. So we not trust the judiciary. Uh, so I have a very time for any other thing that was around in terms of getting my okay. And that was way out of mind. Okay, no problem. No problem. Uh, okay, so having given us this structure, do you know, or if you don't, you can tell the court, if there is any uh, directorate or division of the structure that you have given us? that dealt with uh, the rehabilitation of buildings under that ministry. You know, the, there was a demo. I think the former director general of the technology, in fact, the two former director generals, one is this now, in the special duties. I think they told this thought, they testified that, that the, when it comes to government destroying properties, the deputy director general was charged with that aspect. But there were several deputy director general as well. Deputy director general administration. Deputy director general administration was. When it comes to public authority, the deputy director general was charged with that responsibility. But there were several deputy director general as well. Deputy director general. Deputy director general administration was charged with that management of government buildings? Um, he was directly put in charge of uh, all renovation related matters regarding our mission support. All rehabilitation or renovation works. Renovation works? Mm -hmm. For our mission support, our property support. So in 2015, do you know who that uh, DDG, DDG, DDG for administration was? Yes, it was Mr. Paul Minan. Paul Minan. Mm -hmm. So in which year? In 2015. 2015, 2016. 2015, 2016. Until the time I left, the point that you know. Now, uh, I need to bring you back to New York again. Uh, you have served as a, the director of multilateral cooperation, and you said you served in 2017. 2016, 2017, as yes. director of multilateral. Yes. So eventually you have moved back to New York. Yes, I have moved back to New York. Okay. Is there any reason why you have moved to New York? You know, perhaps uh, I got to know only after consulting my bosses. And then I got to know perhaps uh, why. Because trust me, I was. What was the reason? 
I was a little bit taken aback. I didn't want to go back to New York. I think I said that before. Uh, the reason was that Mr. Sisi was retiring. With Mr. Sisi? The then head of Chancellor. Okay. And we needed somebody with the <coughs> capacity and understanding of the work of the United Nations and its subsidiary bodies in order to needed somebody with an understanding of the United Nations and its subsidiary bodies in order to in order to enhance Sierra Leone's visibility and participation as well as to explore areas <coughs> that Sierra Leone could possibly tap into for the good of the country. Is there a memo that posted you in New York? Yes, I, yes, I have it. I have my report letter, my post letter, I have my post letter. Yeah, we shall be making all of these documents available to you. Uh, but just before we begin to deal with the documents. I mean, when you were recalled as head of Chancellor in New York, you were given specific task and mandate. And so, that's when I was assigned to New York? Yes. Now hold on. You said when you were recalled from when you were posted. When you were posted, my apologies, my Lord, no, this, uh, recall is entirely deleted. I mean, when you were posted to New York. For my, my briefing? Yes. Uh, there were concerns about some gaps in the vision, in the work of the vision. It's specific. And, and you know, I, sometimes I really don't want to delve into some of these issues because it seems like I'm talking more about myself. So you are giving specific terms of reference as head of church? Yes, I was. But you can that also because, you know, the backs about the civil service, when you work too hard, and they know you can get things done. So they always put you in the hot spot. Always, always in the hot spot. So let's deal first with the specific task that we are assigned to you, and then we'll deal with the other things that made it a, a Achillean task for you in the hot spot. Um, what were your specific terms of reference, the mandates that was given to you as a It was broad. Huh? It was broad. Firstly, as head of chancery, mm -hmm. my primary responsibility is to coordinate the work of the staff of the mission and to supervise them in a manner that will bring out the best for Sierra Leone. Secondly, Um, we, we, are, we are still having a lot of issues with the UN with regards to, remember we have graduated from the Security Council agenda, and we are now talking about the time about peace consolidation as opposed to peace building at the time, because we have moved on, and we are also talking about how we work out of fragility. And the other political questions have to do with the issues that we are easily confused. So in view of that, what was your mandate in that regard? Yeah, I mean, I was also supposed to, to be there to sort of monitor the work of mine and supervise them and to make sure that they do the right thing. But the problem was, 
Let's uh, deal with that first. Uh, we are supposed to monitor yes. and supervise them. Yeah. They have sent new staff here. The only old staff that have inherited, who also did not stay for long, was the, was the finance man and Mr. Alan George. The rest of okay, so when you when you went to New York, you went with new staff, except those who they have gone ahead of me for like two months or three months. We should have gone together, but because I was delaying my my way, they have gone ahead. Because yeah. I knew that it was going to be a Herculean task, if not perhaps doing their own job, as well as mine. Because New York is not a place where you just go and throw somebody into. It's not easy, especially if you don't have the background and the right training. So, okay, apart from supervising and monitoring them, did you have any other task? Yes, administrative task. The overall administration, especially the day to day functioning of the Chancellor, and all other administrative related matters. And by the administrative related matters, did it touch and concern the rehabilitation works at the church building? Yes, that was the own administration. Chancery building was part of your duty or mandate or responsibility. Did your predecessor, former head of Chancery, conduct any tour of the existing Chancery building before he left New York? No, I told you I saw him only once. He came in briefly. He came in, he opened the office, went in there, collected some papers, then he locked and, and left. Then a few days after the office and left. Yes, he locked the office and left. He still went around the keys. Then a few days later, he sent the keys and said, the driver. So I have no access whatsoever to any, like the office, as well as any other property that belonged to government at the time. Nothing has been until the end of March 2018. So, were you able to access any documents that pertain to the building, the Chancery building, eventually? At the time, Mr. Sheikh Nefali, who is now the Deputy Ambassador in Washington, who was the one that was acting as head of Chancery when I arrived, and he was also the gentleman. He was the judge's right in was acting as head of Chancery when I arrived. And Mr. Nefali, was also the officer that was managing the file for the building. He was more or less the focal point. Yes, let's get that. Who was a ruler's name referred to as the beginning secretary. Okay, let's get that. Mr. Sheikh Messali, who was acting head of Chancery, was the one, was the focal person for Who was in charge. <laughs> when you arrived. He was in charge. He said the erroneous name referred to him as what? Okay, we said to we didn't have a, we don't have a document in that in that uh, place, but for the convenience of the work, I think it was perhaps uh, it sounded maybe good to call the committee as procurement committee. But they have no procurement training, no procurement function, not the absolute. Okay. Uh, 
So I'm trying to reconstruct how it went when you, there was no former handover, there was no conducted tour, and the keys just came in suddenly. How did you really start the first day? Or like a fire brigade officer. Um, the contractor was was already in trouble with the subcontractors, and he was also in. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? We have not paid them since since September. And he was also in trouble. Since September of what year? Because you are talking about 2017. March 2017. And he was also in trouble with, uh, well, he was also going to get into trouble with the city authorities and the neighbors. With the contractor? The contractor. Why? So that's the heart of New York. Manhattan, close to the New York. It's a prime area. Property uh, prices will be, will, will be affected if your own property is not uh, sort of fit uh, enough. And that also affects um, even. Uh, okay, so because of the condition of the building, we stated that earlier. That, uh, was like a, a hazard spot. Uh, did you have eventually any meeting with the contractor and the subcontractors in view of the fact that you said that the building was now part of the market? I did, after several consultations. What I was waiting for, I had at the time, because I didn't have uh, the benefit of uh, sitting down and talking to the predecessor. So what I did was, uh, I waited for the ambassador to come. He was away from the free time at the time. Who was the ambassador? Ambassador at the Cali Police Mall. And because everybody was hiding from the contractor. Everyone was hiding. When he comes in, everybody will go in and hide. Why? The embarrassment. I really embarrassed. This man was desperate. One of the, the, the main subcontractor was on his neck, and he, he, he even took him to court later, later on. They were in court. And they were in court for what? For non payment. Uh -huh. I even had to. Who took who to court? The subcontractor. They took the construction company to court. Do you recall the name of that subcontractor? I remember his name as Billy. Huh? Billy. 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 I, mm -hmm. I normally don't get trust because I really don't want to get caught into anybody's uh, conflict. That was the, the, the contractors. Uh, he hired him. I, I have nothing to do with subcontractors because for me, if, when I wanted to bring Billy to the office, at the first time I resisted. Because so you said Billy took uh, the contractor to court. For yes. not the, the name of the company. Three, three days, something like that. I, I, I would have to check the Non payment of what? Non payment of uh, money school to them. Okay. For the period that I kept them on the job from September. Okay, so since uh, you did not hide, unlike the other guys, you were bold enough to meet eventually with the contractor. Not that was after consultation. You were I wanted them. to know. Yeah. I mean, I wanted to know where we were with the contractor in terms of payment, what the issues were. So I had to consult Mr. Misali and the other officials that they are those who are members of the committee. The judge is right in sir. Those who are members of the committee that we are dealing with the supervision of the chancery building and the contractors. So I spoke to Mr. Misali, I spoke to the accountant, I spoke to Mr. Alan George, I spoke to Colonel Moana Masakwe who is now the Deputy Minister of Defense, he was on his way out. I also spoke to the gentleman who took over from him. So after those consultations, I approached the ambassador. And I explained the situation to him. 
That was about the building. About the building. But it was almost in transition. There was nothing really he could do. So everything was like on my shoulder. It was a period of transition. The ambassador at the time, you say, was the second accused. Yes, my lord. Okay. When you say period of transition, when did he eventually leave the mission? Well, you know, the sooner he was recalled, that also makes it difficult for when, him to... When, when did he tell us when first? Um, he was there until July or so. What June, year? About June, July, but he was constrained. What year? Uh, 2018. I think he will give clarity to that, but I think he was there until around June or so. He was constrained because he, by then he really didn't have that kind of authority again. Okay, okay, let's leave that for him. Uh, so, the, you know, this thing about Mr. Jules Sanders' contractor. We shall be zeroed in on that, and that is where the trust of our case will lie. Uh, you've done too well, and I, I will respectfully seek the leave of the court because I see the veins and nerves on your temple now standing out. <laughs> if, uh, respectfully, the court can give us a break. We will go and rearrange our documentation. Or you want to say something before I ask the leave of the court? No, no, you are talking about the official but. It has to do with each time I recall those bad public memories, you know, it's different things for you altogether. Yeah, it's but also standing in the box for long is another. But I don't know what your disposition is. Uh, the, I'm sure when we come, we have now come in on the actual matter, the charge of the, everything that we are doing was background. So we hope that when we come next, we'll really deal with the issues before the court. I'm sure we should be able to complete all the work. So, have you not dealt with the issues before the court? <laughs> when? In periphery. That was in periphery when Mr. Nalo, Mr. Nalo was traveling on sojourn in various. Uh, so, so, where are we now? Are we in New York or we're back to Vita? No, no, we are now in New oh, York. We are, uh, where is head of Chancery? Right, so, we're in New York now. Where is head of Chancery? All right. Okay. All right. Um, you know, he went to New York once, came back, and that is why we were such a uh, And now he's, he's now venturing into Mr. Kevaro's case, or Mr. Kevakoma's <laughs> case as well. Uh, I don't know if Teddy is in the court, my lord. I think Teddy has been spending a song. Yeah. Well, I, 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 if I recall, the order did not say a song is to go. <laughs> it said Teddy. <laughs> and you know, I'm going to get all my notes from this gentleman because he has been, even when I sneeze, he will write sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's actually instructions. <laughs> to write everything. <laughs> And, and to this case, it's all hanging on your tilco. My lord, when he came in, I actually grew him. I mean, you were not paying attention. I say, this spider thing is not going to help you. <laughs> Spiders always get a bite. Mr. Malo. Council was asking them to give you a break. Right. So you can recover and to come back to continue with your evidence. Um, bad memories are memories everybody has. But your ability to overcome bad memories is what makes you a man. Right. You need to forget about the bad memories and focus on even worst memories. You don't focus on your evidence. Right? Thank you, Right, uh, gentlemen, with respect to the discussion earlier on this morning, I'll be giving some orders to deal with that this afternoon. And again, the next adjourned date, if there are any of those issues arising, you'll need to be um, sent in by way of motion so we, I can deal with them before next week. Right? So the timetable is tight, but please. 
if you have them, let the prosecution know. Prosecution, if you have issues, so far as we discuss, deal with those. I'll deal with those before we come next week. Right? So we'll adjourn to the 26th of July. That's next week, Wednesday. July ten. Please, 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 court is still in session. The kind of will continue for all Wednesday at ten thirty. Of course, um, the court just adjourned on the matter of this um, chancery case with Sadu Nalo and uh, four others, including Dr. Samoa Bati Wilson Kama, the leader of the All People's Congress. When the court is zoom in second half, are still Mr. Nalo, still dinner at the dock. They answer a question from a lawyer, Pamomo Fofana, um, for continue, but the chancery, they say he returned back in 2017, around November, and he talk about uh, money where he meet, when I want million, and he said the second one million will be play in Sierra Leone. But we'll not be rich outside if we can forget account of the second one million. But he did say the term will go, now they, the term, now the term that the problem starts. Because when they know the sponsor money to the contractor, he said the. Um, Subcontractor be doing at the contractor in throat. Well, for reason best known, uh, it's time for investigate because never them will complain about this same building. It's how some staff that we've been there in that transition, the other one they may not go ahead, the term with them make them head of chancery. Well, uh, Mr. Nalo, the gee. The evidence in this matter will continue next week as the judge adjourned to July 26, where the matter will continue. Remember, each of the accused them gave for Timap Naradok for give their own side of the story of this chantry. So the matter adjourned to next week, Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, 26th of July, we 10 o'clock morning at the same court, court number one, and the same judge, Justice Edgar Fisher, Nyingo, um, proceed with the matter. Well, we go stop so far because we're going to go back to New England Ville, and I'm for say plenty thank you to my colleague that money work with me. Sheku G. Kama, Wade on camera, James Cocker, and Alex C. Technical Man. And plenty thank you to Suleiman Samoa and George Shepard, Sheku Sumaila, the colleague then in New England Ville, one in Alistair Peak, on behalf of the Director General and staff of the SFC. This is now the Salon Broadcasting Corporation, the broadcast live from court number one, the law court of Sierra Leone. My name is Dan Mosse, and we'll go back to New Englandville for continuing the day's broadcast. Remember, the matter adjourned to July 26, 
2023. Until then, good afternoon and bye-bye.